think about that this morning, amen? He's the hope. Christ is the hope, amen? The world wants to tear down that old lighthouse. They don't like that lighthouse called Jesus. They want their own lighthouse. They want to do their own thing, amen, unfortunately. And uh, we talked about faith in the Sunday school hour. I'm going to talk a bit about that today, too, as you saw in, our, in the, the scripture that I was reading here. The Bible says in verse 19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, notice the word some, you know, I like these things that Paul says here. You know, sometimes people think, you know, oh, everybody is getting off board. Everybody is going away from God. Go to chapter 4, verse 1. Amen. Keep your place in the first chapter, but go to chapter 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times all shall depart from the faith. Is that what it says? Is that what it says? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. No, he says some shall depart from the faith. Some, some, some. That's who, uh, it's not everybody. Amen. You're serving God this morning. You're living for Christ this morning. Amen. Okay. You're not part of that some. Some that will be having shipwreck and some that will depart from the faith. Amen. Thank God for that. Listen, we need some people to stand up and be strong in Christ, Ephesians 6 tells us. That's where our strength is in. It's in Christ. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us over in the book of Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Are you focused on the Lord or are you focused on yourself and your circumstances this morning? Amen. We need to turn our hearts and minds to Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, the Bible tells us, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. So keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? Where's your heart and your mind this morning? What have you been spending time this week? Amen? Been spending all your time on the news media and the social media? Listen, you need to spend time in the Word of God. Amen. We need, the Bible says, now you are clean through the word which I've spoken to you in John chapter 15. We need to clean up our minds here. Amen. We're so focused on all this current event stuff that we fail to realize that we got a God in heaven. He's still alive. And listen, as we did the children's Sunday school, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. What's impossible? Nothing's impossible with God. Amen. So we need to get our hearts and minds on the right things. And uh, so... A few years ago, a couple of years ago, I guess, I don't know, and you kind of lose track of time here about different things here. Um, and uh, look at verse 18, back in chapter 1, chapter 1. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, amen? Charge would be like charging your battery, amen? Here's Paul trying to encourage Timothy to keep on going for God, amen? And uh, he says unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Listen, can I help you out with something? We're, there is a spiritual battle going on this morning, a spiritual battle. People think, oh, it's a political. We got to fight the political battle. No, no, no. If you're saved, your greater battle, the most important battle that you should be engaged in this morning is a spiritual warfare. You need to put on the whole armor of God, and you need to realize that there's powers of darkness at play in this world. We need to stand up for Jesus Christ. We need to get our hearts and minds focused on that spiritual battle that goes on 24-7, amen? And we need to do that. We need to think about that. The Bible tells us that. Keep your place there and go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Love this chapter here. Verse 4 of 2 Corinthians 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not spiritual. Is that what it says? No, it says are not carnal. The battle is not flesh and blood. It's not arguing with people about conspiracy theories. It's not arguing with people about all the stuff that's being floating around social media, news media. What is it? There is a spiritual battle. People are lost without Jesus Christ. They need the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. What are you doing about it if you're saved? What are you doing about it this morning? Amen? Have you been in the lockdown? Have you gotten locked jaw? Amen. You're afraid to talk about Jesus. You haven't talked about him. You're not engaging with people. Man, we, I'll tell you, we've got to realize this. Paul wrote, again, to the Corinthian believers. He says, your weapons of your warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. It's not a battle with fighting and arguing with people about this stuff that's, that's going through this world. It's about Jesus Christ. 
What do, you, what do you believe about Jesus? Amen? What do you think about him? What think ye of Christ? Who do you say that he is? How about that one? Let's get back to the real, real, real important matters. Who is he? We know who he is. We're saved. If you're saved, you know who Jesus is. Amen? But he says there in verse 4, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. There's a lot of imagina imaginations going on in the world through news and social media. People are imagining things that are not real. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, that's just people thinking they're smarter than God. You're not smarter than God. The Bible says the wisdom, the best this world can come up with, is foolishness to God. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. People think Christians are foolish today for even trying to come in with five people in a church. People think the church is, is not important today. That's what the world thinks. They think retail is important. Everything else is important. But God is not important. The Bible is not important. Yes, that is the most important thing. The Bible says it's at the Word. It's at the Word of God. God exalted it even higher than His name in Psalm 138, verse 2. Amen? That's what He says. I magnified my Word above all my name. How about that? Think about the name that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. God says, my Word is magnified above that. How about that? We need to spend time in the book. That's the book that's going to last. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall never pass away. Amen? That's what we need to spend time doing. Amen. Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bring it into captivity every thought, every thought, not just some of them. Are you captivating your thoughts this morning, or are you letting your mind run wild thinking about all this stuff that's going on in the world? Amen. Come on. God says bring it into captivity. Come on, capture that. Get your heart and your mind back on the things of God. Let's get down. Let's, we need to spend time with each other to encourage each other. We need to, we need to uh, help our kids and train up our children. Amen. We need to spend time there. We need to be good citizens. Amen. In this world. And yes, let's get that gospel out. That people need the Lord. And he says bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Obedience to, uh, to Christ of Christ. Amen. Go to Ephesians 6. We'll come back to the first Timothy passage in a minute. Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians chapter 6. And we'll give you some more thoughts here. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible says here, uh, verse 12, Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Is that what you're wrestling with? He says, it's not a fleshly battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, and then he goes to that whole thing about the armor of God. Wherefore, because of what he just said, take unto you, God's not going to put it on. You've got to dress yourself. Just like you've got to teach your kids to dress themselves, you need to dress yourself spiritually. Amen. I would dare say most adults dress themselves this morning. I know some who might have disabilities and, and challenges might not be able to dress themselves and they need a, a, a long-term care worker, or a home care worker, or someone in the hospital to help them. Amen. Listen, you can get up out of bed. You can walk around. You can dress yourself. You ought to bless God and thank God this morning. Amen. But some of us as adults who are saved, who know Christ, I'm telling you something, we're not dressing up for God. We're not dressing up. We're not putting on this armor. God says, I'm not putting it on you. you got to take unto it and put it on yourself. And it's a spiritual battle. You want to you you be victorious in this spiritual battle? You need to do what God says. And if there is a failure out there, it's not because God failed. It's because you or I failed. It's a failure on our part, not on God's part. God never fails. He never makes a mistake. Amen? Praise God for that. Anyway, so listen, we got to do that. Go back to that verse 18 of chapter 1 of 1 Timothy. The Bible says, This charge I commit unto thee, uh, <clears throat> Son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on before, that thou mightest war a good warfare. Are you warring a good warfare? A good warfare, as I've said, is not a carnal one. It's not a fleshly one. It's not a political one. It's not a social media one. It's a word of God getting the gospel out and encouraging the saints, exhorting one another as so much the more as you see the day approaching, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. That's what God wants us to do. Amen? It's a battle. We're in a spiritual battle. We're on the front lines. Amen? We're on the front lines of that spiritual battle. What are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? What are you spending your time? Do, your, do, a, do a time study with your life. Do a time study. 
You know what? I have this app. It's got the, it's a Microsoft launcher, and I use it on my phone here. And on it, it, it could tell you how many minutes you're spending on all your social media and on, or on your phone and all the apps. I don't know if, you know, different uh, brands of phones can do different things. You can find that out. I wonder how much time. I wonder how much time, if you've got a Bible app, you spend on that one. You say, I don't use Bible app. I have a, a, a paper Bible. That's good. Are you, are you reading it? Amen? You ought to be reading it. You ought to be reading that thing. Amen? You know why? You know something? Before you got saved, there was a spiritual warfare. It was ongoing before. Just because you got saved doesn't mean it just began. It might have begun in your life in the sense that you're re you have the reality of understanding it now and you know. And you know what? Uh, we cannot quit because we are in a warfare, a spiritual warfare. Amen? And it's, listen, we need to carry on. There is a real, real, listen, a real battle going on. So what Paul's telling Timothy, he says, you know, you're on the front lines. You can't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give up. We've seen people in the ministry in the last eight, nine months now, going on nine months, I guess, if you count March. Amen. Some have gotten out of the ministry, got discouraged. People are fighting, uh, pastors and ministers of the gospel are fighting depression, fighting all kinds of things. Amen. We're all susceptible to that. We can, if we allow it to conquer us. We allow it to conquer us. Amen. Listen, we got to keep on going. What, what's, what's happening with these churches? Amen. Where's the congregations? And, and our, our, uh, where's the leadership? Amen. That's leading God's people. Okay, we're getting sidetracked on social media and news media. Let's get back on the Word of God. Let's get back on this spiritual battle that's going on. Amen. That's what we need to refocus our thoughts on. And uh, so, you know what? He says, Paul, Timothy, you're on the front lines. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up. Amen? Listen, it's always easier to start than it is to finish. You know what God's interested in this morning? He's interested in people who will finish their course. Amen? I don't know about you. I hope he says to me, and I hope he says to you, if you're saved this morning, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I hope you hear those words. I hope you hear those words. Amen? I hope I hear those words. You've been faithful. God wants you to be faithful. It's easy to start. It's another thing to finish. Are you going to finish well? Amen? It'd be better to not start right and finish well than to start right and not finish well. God wants you to finish well. That's the end result. God's more concerned about how you finish than what you start. So many have never started off in a Christian home. Amen? And many of them have gotten saved. I'm not against Christian homes. I started a Christian home after I got saved. Amen. Got married and had a Christian home. We need to have Christian homes. We need to teach our kids. We need to train them and teach them. Amen. But the reality is there's people that never had that benefit, never had that blessing, that are saved today, that are living more, more faithfully and serving God more zealously than some young people and people in homes that were raised in a Christian home. And that's a shame. It's a shame on Christian homes. What are we doing? We're failing. Amen. Let's spend time. Let's spend time together. Like I said in the Sunday school hour, spend time together. Sunday afternoon, go over and read the passages. Go back and review the YouTube. Whatever it is, spend time in the Word. Use a Bible app. Use a paper Bible, but do something. Amen. Do something, whatever you're doing. And uh, you know what? Paul says, hey, there's going to be ups and downs in the ministry, Timothy. He's a young pastor. You read 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. You'll see the problems he faced. You read Titus. You'll see the problems that Titus faced on the island of Crete, pastoring that church. They had challenges. They had problems. People, I don't know where some people enter in the ministry think, oh, you know, that's going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be easy, you know, doing all this stuff. Hey, listen, I don't know where you're coming from, but listen, as soon as you enter in to the ministry, you are, you are putting yourself in the front lines. Oh, everybody's engaged in a warfare that's same, but the ministers, the preachers are on the front lines. They're getting, they're getting shot. <laughs> the darts are hitting. They're coming at them. Amen? They're coming at us. That shield of faith, we've got to keep it up. We've got to keep it up. Keep it up. Battles, the battles that we're facing. Look at verse 19, and I want to focus on this, and I, I'm, I'm not an expert of what I'm going to tell you on this, but I want you to see. That's why I sang the Lighthouse song for what it's worth. Amen. He says, holding faith. Did you see that? Holding faith. Are you holding the faith? Come on. 
Are you holding the faith? Are you in the right? Are you thinking right? You know, I, I want to help people. You know, you, you know, isn't it something how people will attack you on a YouTube, on a Wednesday night message, on a Sunday night? What about, why don't you direct your efforts to win people to Christ instead of attacking me because I have a pre-tribulation rapture stance? Why don't you get busy for God and start telling people about Jesus? Stop attacking other Christians. Amen? I'll tell you, some people, they're, they're so misdirected, some Christians. They're, they're, they're just on one, one hobby horse. That's all they're on. I'm not on one hobby horse. Most of my preaching is expository, and it's verse by verse. It forces me to go through every verse in the Bible and teach everything and not skip over anything. I don't major on one thing. Some people say, you know, Wednesday night, Sunday night, you've been talking about that other stuff, the pre-tribulation and the difference between the rapture and the revelation. That's because we were in those passages. That's why we're doing this. And I want to help Christians because they're confused. You know what would help some Christians to read that second? Keep your place there, 2 Thessalonians. I'll get to some of my notes here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. I preach this, and I want to mention to those who are not watching Wednesday nights, Sunday nights. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together under him. That's one thing no government will ever be able to stop. That's our gathering unto him. When Jesus takes us out, he takes his bride out, amen? He says this, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand, is at hand. He says, Christ is coming back soon. That was written in 54 AD. And he says this, don't be so soon shaken in mind or trouble. What's that all about, pastor? Well, in the first letter, they were shaken. They were going through persecution. They thought, oh, maybe we're in the tribulation now. And he wrote that second letter, and that second chapter <laughs> helps us understand. Hey, what are you doing? Don't worry. I'm going to give you some detail of this tribulation thing. The Antichrist hasn't been revealed. Don't worry. You're safe. You haven't missed the rapture. Amen. You're going up. Amen. You read the rest of chapter 2. You'll see that. It's all about what's going to take place after we're taken out of here. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what, are you shaken? Are you troubled in mind this morning? What are you troubled about? Amen? Troubled. It's, it's warfare. It's spiritual warfare. And he says, so holding faith and good conscience, back at 1 Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, 19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, some, I highlight that, as I've said already, putting, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck have made shipwreck. He says some. Some. Amen? Some. You know what? You know what? Isn't it a shame uh, that people that are saved, that know Christ, you can have a shipwreck. We're not talking about loss of salvation. Amen? We don't believe in anyone could lose their salvation. If you're born again, you're born again. You, you are saved eternally. The Bible says you have eternal life, not temporal life. 1 John 5, verses 10 through 13. Amen? Thank God for that. Thank God for that. But he says, some, some, amen? And he says, they put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, have made shipwreck. You know what? Let me just say something here, and I'll get into the, a couple of thoughts on this message here this morning. And um, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm a not a nautical expert, okay? I'm not. You know, I, I love the lighthouse. I, I love the song I sing. I, I love thinking about that. Our, 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 whatever you want to call it, I forgot the name of it, whatever it is, on our church page, you know, on, on my letterhead is the lighthouse. It's Peggy's Cove Lighthouse. I took that picture years ago when I first came to Nova Scotia back in 1994. I took that picture. I walked up on one side of the shore and took that picture. And you know what? I love the lighthouse. And I think of the song that I sang. You know, Jesus is the lighthouse. He wants to keep people from having shipwreck in their life. Number one, for those who are lost without Jesus, they need to turn to him. Amen? And number two, for those who are saved, listen, you can have a shipwreck in this life. Amen? You know, you can end up doing something that caused you to get away from God and, and have, you know, because you're not obeying the Lord, you're not following Christ as you ought to be. I don't want you to have a shipwreck. I don't want you to have a shipwreck. I, I just, I, I, again, I, how can I do this here? And again, just I, I stand to be corrected, okay? I know, Brother Gary, you work on the other side of the basin there and all that kind of stuff. But let me read this here about shipwreck. A fully loaded tanker, and you say, how big? I don't know. 
just a fully loaded tanker moving at 16 knots, needs 20 minutes to come to a stop. Did you get that? A fully loaded tanker moving at 16 knots needs 20 minutes to stop. A collision with an immovable object, a sandbar, reef, rocks, is inevitable up to five kilometers away. It's inevitable. You don't change your course if you're going a certain speed in the water. The way to keep from shipwreck is to keep, listen, the faith and keep that good conscience, amen? And many people are drifting towards a collision with sin. They think, oh, nothing's happened yet. Nothing's happened yet. Listen, you're going so fast towards those rocks, you, it's inevitable you're going to have a shipwreck in your life because you didn't change direction when you should have. Something took place in your life that shouldn't have taken place, and, it's, and it's, it's a mar on the cause of Christ. People look at that and say, there you go. I knew it was just a flash in the pan, you know, thing about this person, about saying they believe in Jesus and they're saved and they're born again. That's how the world looks at it. Have you told everybody at work that you're a Christian? Amen? Do they know you're saved? Do they know you're a Christian? Or are you like a CSIS agent or a Secret Service agent for Christ? Hardly anybody could ever tell you're a Christian. Man, I'll tell you. Shipwreck, shipwreck. You know, you're, you could be heading for shipwreck. Let me give you some things to help you. Because here's some of the things that can cause a shipwreck in your life. Amen? First of all, let me tell you this. You need to be saved. You need to settle that question in your life. Amen? Satan doesn't want people to be saved. Old smutty face, old Lucifer does not want the people in this world to open their eyes and their hearts to Jesus Christ this morning. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You know, that's, an, that's a powerful passage in John chapter 3. The Bible tells us this that when you are lost, the wrath of God's abiding on you right now, present tense. You say, well, you know, if people die without Christ, they end up in hell. Yes, that's true. But God's wrath is abiding on them right now. That's what the Bible says. And I'll tell you, I'm telling you, we got we to take this thing seriously. People need Christ. They need to know Jesus Christ. There's so much false teaching out there that people get confused. Like I said, all the news and social media, it's going like crazy out there. Everybody's got technology in the palm of their hand. They're seeing all kinds of stuff. You choose to watch and listen to stuff. Hey, man, I'm telling you, I choose to get my head, my, put my head and my heart in this book because we need, we need to get close to God. We need to get close to God. I don't know where this thing's all going. I know ultimately we'll be removed from here, but God never told us when. There is no time. No day or hour. We don't know for sure when that's going to happen, so you need to be faithful. You need to keep the focus. Looking unto him, Hebrews 12 says. Amen? So you got the assurance of salvation. Have you put your complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ, or are you trusting in your own works? Is that the basis for your salvation? You say, well, I've been baptized. I've been sprinkled as a baby, and I've been water baptized. I know I'm going to heaven, and that's your answer? You're lost. That doesn't save anybody. So, Water does not wash away your sin. The blood of Christ does. It's through the blood of Christ. There's a remission of sin. Hebrews 9.22 says it's, that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. You need Jesus this morning. You need Jesus. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Talk about shipwreck. First of all, you've got to get saved. Amen? First, you've got to get saved. That, that's where it starts. How about that? 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Look at verse 10. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar. Hmm, how about that? You know, the Bible tells us in the book of James, the devils believe and tremble. They got more sense than some people on planet Earth. They know who God is. They even say that in different accounts in the New Testament. Oh, we know who, you know, who are you? We know this guy and this guy. We know God, but who are you? Amen. They know God. They know, they know who he is. They know he's the son of the highest. That's what we read in the Sunday school hour in Luke 1. They know who he is. 
Bible says, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Verse 11, this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in water baptism. No, this life is in church membership. No, this life is in being a good person and being kind to others. No, this life is in his son. Those are all the outworkings of salvation. Yes, get in the church. Yes, follow the Lord in obedience to baptism. That doesn't save your soul. Yes, be kind to people. Yes, love people. But you can be the kindest, most loving person on planet earth, but if you're not saved, you're going to hell. According to the Bible. Amen? That's just as plain as I can make it. I don't know how, any, how plainer I can make it. This life is in His Son. Eternal life is in Jesus Christ. It's not in anything else you can imagine in your mind. Verse 12. I love this. I like these single-syllable words, amen? A little child can read these. You know, you want to give them the, the old grammar books, you know, and the old one-room one schoolhouse, amen? They had these grammar books, and, you know, John and uh, hath, see, John, run, see, you know, all that kind of stuff. Watch this one. You ready? He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. How about that? All so simple, so simple, but yet people are so full of pride. Oh, I can save myself. No, you can't. You'll end up in hell forever. You can't save your soul. That's why, if you could save your own soul, then what Jesus did on the cross was a complete waste of time. The Bible tells us at the end of Paul's letter to the churches in Galatia, he says, then Christ is dead in vain. If righteous can be attained through the law by your good works, then what was the purpose in him coming if you could save your own soul? You can't. You can't save your own soul. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. There's the promise of God, that ye may know. Amen? That ye may know. This is a battlefield. It's faith. It's faith. Amen? The world, the devil, the, the flesh out there in this world, our flesh, fights against this, fights against the truth. Look at this. You want to you uh, keep from having shipwreck? Go to Genesis 3.1. Here's the first shipwreck. Want to see the first shipwreck in the Bible? Here it is. Here's the first shipwreck. What happened over there in the garden? Amen? That was the biggest shipwreck that ever happened. It changed the whole world. We're still living through the curses of that shipwreck. We're still living through the consequences of someone's choices and decisions. Don't ever think for a minute that your choices and decisions don't affect anybody else but yourself. That's a devil's lie. That's a devil's lie. The moment you make choices in your life and you take, make decisions in your life, you are affecting someone in this world. You are. Amen? As a pastor, I affect the, the people that are part of this membership of this assembly here. Amen? As a husband, I affect my wife. As a father, I affect my kids. If I was a, a supervisor, manager, lead hand, whatever title you want that's in supervisory capacity in a workplace, my decisions affect the, co the workers in that facility. Teachers' decisions and their authority and schools, and we all affect everybody. Our government leaders, amen? The, the city, the province, the country, our prime minister. We need to pray for everybody. People in leadership, amen? You say, well, I, I'm not in any leadership position. You're still affecting somebody's life by your choices and your decisions. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you. Watch this. Are you ready? Uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. After God created the earth, he created man, created woman. Amen. And uh, the Bible tells us that uh, the devil came. Where did the devil come? He came in the garden. That's where God set this whole thing up. Beautiful garden. Every manner of bearing fruit bearing tree was there the bible says man that must have been amazing man you can't find certain trees here in halifax you got to go down south somewhere in america or down central america or down south america <laughs> amen but he says all manner of tree that's bearing fruit and he set up this garden but he said there's one rule what's the rule what's the rule the rule is this don't eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that's the only thing. You got it all. It's all yours. Help yourself to everything else that's in this garden. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Isn't it something? I've said this multitudes of times for those who have heard me. You know, well, you know, you tell your kids, don't, you can't do this or you can't do that. What do they do? Many times they turn around and they go for what you just told them that they're not supposed to do. But 
has changed in 6,000 years. Nothing. Yep, zero. We still, even us as adults, amen, even as us as adults, you tell them you can't do something, what do they do? It's just that rebellious spirit inside. What are you doing? I'm going to check this out. You know, old Satan there, he, you know, the Bible says there he had this conversation with Eve. He, point, he went through Adam's wife first to, to, to cause this thing to take place, to, this shipwreck to take place. And he questioned, the first question at the end of verse 1, Ye shall not, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Let me tell you something right now. You want to have a shipwreck? Question God's word. Don't believe it. Listen, this book is true. I don't understand it all, but it's true. It's true. This will help you. You know, some said, well, I bought this great book, or I watched this great video on YouTube of having a good marriage. Not, I'm not saying it's wrong or bad, but where do you think they got it from? This book. Where did, where did any good writer, Christian writer, get the information that's really going to help your life? From this book. This is it. This is the book they got it from. Why don't you just get down to where they got the information from and study it and read it? You know what the problem is? Some people don't want to spend time studying and reading. They'd rather read a book about the Bible rather than the Bible. That's what people like would rather do. I want to read that book. Read your Bible. No, I don't like reading the Bible. You know, I don't understand half of it, you know. You're heading for a shipwreck. You better read the Bible. You better spend time in the Word of God. God's given us 66 books. I don't know where everything's going in our world, but there may be a time in our lifetime, your lifetime, whoever's watching this, that you may, but the Bible may be outlawed in our society. It could be construed as hate literature because of certain passages. Some people have already said that. Can you imagine that? God's a God of love, and they're saying He hates. No, you know what? People just can't understand. They just can't understand God is a balanced God. He's a fair God. As much as God loves, God hates. That's what he does. And I'll tell you, we live in a messed up world. And I'll tell you, you ought to hate the sin that's destroying people's lives. The scriptures, the scriptures. You know what a tax is? You want to get to have a shipwreck? Believe what the science of today says instead of the Bible. You know, there's things that way back in centuries past, you know, it used to be a, a practice in recognized medical science that you bloodlet people when they have infections. You know what? Many people died from that, but that was accepted practice. I remember when I was in school back in the 60s, and many of you know what I'm going to say, we were taught this. We were taught back in the 60s that the world is going into a deep freeze. That was accepted practice in science back in the 60s. That was an ecology class. Now the science says, no, no, that's not going to happen. Talk about flip-flop. No, this, 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 this is accepted science. What is accepted science? I know one thing. If it goes against the Scriptures, it's not science, truly. The Bible says it's science, falsely so-called, over there in, in 1 Timothy 6.20. It's science, falsely so-called. The world calls it science. It's not science. A lot of stuff in this confusion that we see in our world this morning, they call it science. They call it DNA. No, no, you're, they're all wrong. It's unbiblical. It's not. It's science, falsely so-called. They're convincing the young people in universities and all this stuff. Man, I'll tell you. You know, here we have the Bible. We have the truth. The devil wants to cause you to doubt the truth of the Scriptures. Listen, this is our standard. This is our rock here. Amen? You want to have shipwreck? You want to have a shipwreck? Listen, Start doubting this book. Don't live according to the Scriptures. You're going to have a shipwreck. You're going to have a shipwreck. How about this? Let's go to the next thing here. Philippians 4.19. We've got to wrap up here shortly. Philippians 4.19. I love this passage. Sometimes people don't really... How can I say it? Um, people don't read these, these passages in Philippians 4 properly. You know, Like for instance, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Man, there's so many great things here in this passage here. Oh, boy, I tell you. Um, anyway, let me get to this passage here. Verse 18, Philippians 4, 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. You know what? It was the gift of the saints uh, to the work of the Lord. Paul kind of likened it to an Old Testament sacrifice. How about that? Amen. 
And uh, he says this, and well please unto God. So he says, because the people gave. They had a heart of giving. The Bible says, verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let me say something else to you today. I don't know what you have or don't have, but I guarantee you, in Canada, I'll speak for Canada, we are still far better off and we live higher than most people in this world outside of North America. You ask the immigrants, they just, listen, you know what? People are flocking to North America, to Canada especially. They're leaving their countries, and of course they're leaving family behind, and that's hard. But there's opportunity. There's hope. <laughs> you know, listen, we, we are so, we don't realize what we have. You know what? You want to have a shipwreck, be ungrateful. Be ungrateful for what you do have in this life. We have been blessed. We have truly been blessed beyond, beyond what we really deserve. Really, if you consider it, what do you and I really deserve in this life? Amen. And we've been blessed. And God says, hey, listen, God wants to supply your need. That's a very important word, by the way. God knows your need. You say, I, I know my need. So people take that verse and say, I, um, God promised my need, and I know what my need is. Maybe you're wrong in what you think your need is. People think that. They think, oh, yep, God. And they put this verse. It's a catch-all verse for anything they think they need, and God is obligated to supply. You don't understand the verse. God says he'll supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. According to him. Amen. you got to think about that. We have an abundance of supply. Amen. As of late, we've seen it the last three or four months. We've seen some empty shelves of different products. Paper products, amen? We've seen empty shelves of different things. You know, in some countries, that's a way of life. Forget about an empty shelf on certain products. How about half the store or 90% of the store? How about that? How about just living and being thankful for what you got? How about making do in the, in the, in the fridge with what you got and using what you have and not throwing out half the stuff we throw out? How about that? Boy, I tell you, we're spoiled. An ungrateful heart will cause shipwreck. It will cause you shipwreck in your life. Not only that, but a lack of faith and trust in God's Word will cause you shipwreck in this life. Look at Philippians 4. We're in chapter 4, so let's stay in chapter 4, and we've got to wrap up shortly here. The Bible says in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Here's another one of those catch-all verses that people like to put up on plaques and all that kind of stuff. So they think that whatever I think, uh, that I think I could, or I'd like to do, that God will give me the strength to do whatever I want to do. Let's, let's, let's qualify the verse. God will give you the strength to do everything that he wants you to do. Did you get that? Not what you want necessarily, what God wants for you. The Bible says, I, Paul says, I can do all those things through Christ. Outside of Christ, you can't do it. With that, whatever it is that you're planning on doing, is that bringing honor and glory to God? If you've been with us with our Roman study in Romans chapter 14, you would have seen, listen, is it unto the Lord? That was one of those studies. Is it unto the Lord? Is it unto the Lord? Can you do it unto Christ? Will it bring God glory? It's got to be through Christ. It can't be just... You know, this God's, you know, like a, a genie, and you rub the bottle, and you say whatever he wants, and he gives it to you. No, no. He said this, you can do all things through him, through Christ, which strengtheneth you. You know what? God's given us an availability of strength to do the things that God wants us to do. Some people say, oh, I can't do it. I don't know where you're finding that. If it's God's will... If, what God, if it's something that God said that you're supposed to do, you can do it. It's not a measure. I can't. It's probably a more properly worded, I don't want to do it, instead of I can't do it. it. There's a big difference. If God said to do it, we need to do it. End of story. Amen? And uh, so God promised to give us the strength. God promised. And you know what? The problem is today... People are not doing what God wants them to do, so they have a shipwreck. They're doing what they want to do. They're doing their own thing, their own way, instead of what God wants for them. Let's go over to Joshua chapter 1. I know i got to wrap up here. 
Oh, I hope you don't have a shipwreck. See, you got, you got to look down further. You got to look way ahead. It's like farsighted. You got to be way ahead. Look way ahead. Way, way ahead. You know, when you make that decision, look down the road and say, okay, now where is this going to take me in life? If I make this choice and decision, and I choose to engage in this sin in my life, where is that going to take me? It's going to take you as a songwriter farther than you want to go. You're going to pay more than you want to pay. A lot more. There's a high cost of sin, <laughs> let me tell you. You say, well, I know some people are living in sin, some Christians, and I haven't really seen anything happen. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6, verses 6 and 7. Don't worry, God's not mocked. You can't laugh at God and get away with it. God's going to deal with that thing. But look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua, oh, I'm in Judges. Get over to Joshua. What am I doing in Judges? Joshua 1, and we've got to wrap up here. Amen? I hope you don't have shipwreck. Get your heart and your mind back on the Lord. Get it all off this other craziness that's going on in the world this morning. Get it on Jesus. Spend time with your family. Build each other up in the faith. Amen. Pray for each other. Have family time. Family, family prayer. Family altar. Do that. That's what we need today. Amen. Maybe you need to spend less time on YouTube or on videos and everything. We need to spend more time in prayer. Do we, do we, do we see the urgency of the hour or do we just kind of like just carrying on like nothing's happening. And I'll tell you, we we, we got to readjust some things. Otherwise, we're going to have a shipwreck. There's going to be shipwreck. Amen. What we need is some Christians that are still steadfast in Christ, that are going forward for Christ, that are effective witnesses for Christ, and building up the brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what we need this morning. We need more people like that. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. This is my, this, these are my life verses. Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein once a week. <laughs> Day and night. Day and night. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah, we're tired in the things that we don't like doing. Amen? The Day and night. Day and night. Observe. Meditate that thou mayest observe to do according to some of what is written, all that is written therein. Then, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God says prosperity is based upon meditation and observing the Word of God. That means obeying it and doing it. God says in His eyes, that is what He causes prosperity. And it's not always material prosperity. That's how we operate. We're in this world of carnal world, so it's all about material things. God says, you know what? You want to be prosperous? You want to have good success? That's the only time the word success is ever found in your Bible. How about that? It's connected to the Word of God. Have I not commanded thee? This is the Joshua. Amen. He just took over the reins from Moses there. God used him to preserve the first five books of the Bible. Amen. He just took over the reins. And he says there, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. <laughs> Man, have you seen the giants that they saw in that land? I know giants could be other things in our society tonight. I know. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. You know how many books of the Bible Joshua had? He had five books. You know how many you got? 66. God says, with what you got, Joshua, says, have I not commanded you? Has not God commanded us? I don't, I, I don't want to have a shipwreck. You better listen better obey. You better meditate. You better observe to do all that is written therein. We have greater, we have a greater, how can I say, we've been blessed in a greater way with 66 books. But do you know something? Whether you read them all or not, it doesn't matter. God says, I'm going to make it accountable to you. Because he's given us his whole book, word of God. He wants you to spend time reading this book. 
and applying the truth that are in it. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Good verse for 2020, December 13th. Neither be thou dismay. Are you discouraged? What are you discouraged about? Amen. You can have the joy of the Lord. It can be your strength today. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Listen, there's so much more I could say this morning, but I hope you don't have a shipwreck. Amen. God wants you to go forward. God wants you to live for him. Careful the choices and decisions you make. Stay close to God. The Bible says in James 4, 7, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to thee. You're as close to God as you want to be. You want to be close to God? Better stay close to God today. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer uh, this, this morning. Father, again, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the word of God today. Thank you for the promises that we've read. Thank you, Lord God, for the truths that are contained in it. Lord God, we pray this morning that we would apply those truths, not just be hearers, but hearers and doers of your word, Lord God. Father, for those who aren't saved, help them to realize, Lord God, that they don't know the day of their death. They know their birthday, but God, help them to realize that they shouldn't boast about what a day may bring forth, Lord God. Help them to see that, Father, God, uh, at any moment, at any time, they can pass from this earth. Help them realize the importance of salvation. And it's only found in Jesus Christ. It's not found in a religion. It's not found in any works that we could ever attain. But it's solely found in what Christ did on the cross for us. Oh God, touch their hearts. Touch their hearts. Open their eyes. Now, Father, encourage the saints this morning. We go about the rest of our day today, this Sunday afternoon. Help us, Lord God, to meditate, think upon, be a help and blessing to other believers. Get the gospel out, Lord God. Just use us, Lord God. And Help us just to spend time, make this day a different day than the rest of all the other six days in the world. Now, God, again, give us safety for those who are in-house, in-person, and uh, bring us back together again for our evening service. And thank you and praise you. Uh, and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you all. Lord willing, we hope to connect with you again.